So after frontline therapy, what are the approved uh, or available lines of therapy in second line? So the approved therapy for second line treatment of GIST is sunitinib, um, which is, you know, was approved based on a randomized placebo controlled trial. And when patients are progressing on imatinib, it's important to recognize the types of progression. So occasionally patients who've had a good response to imatinib, if they've had a kit or, or one of those sensitive PDGFR mutations, uh, they're responding well, they develop very cystic lesions. And then over time within these lesions, you might start seeing what we call nodular progression or small nodules of solid tumor that start appearing and slowly growing over time. And what that signifies is that there is probably development of a resistance mutation in, in a little clone of cells uh, that is now growing. And now it's, and the second type of progression, of course, is when you have more uh, global progression in multiple uh, tumors or multiple metastases all at the same time, uh, and it's not nodular. And these tend to be either primary uh, resistance patterns where the patient never responded really to imatinib and continued to progress, or they were responding, but then multiple lesions started to progress. Um, these types of progression actually do, the type of progression tends to point towards the type of resistance that might be, um, the patient might have to the treatment. If you have more global progression, uh, it points to either a resistant mutation up front, like the PDGFR D842E. Sometimes these patients might have NF1, you know, some of these wild type tumors, some mutations that don't respond to matinib might have more of a global progression. Or patients who are responding and develop, you know, multiple areas that are progressing, it signifies multiple resistance, uh, secondary mutations that might have developed after the primary mutation. And nodular progression usually, um, you know, signifies a secondary mutation that has developed on top of the primary kit or PDGFR mutation. So what are secondary mutations that are common? Because I said 60 to 70% have a kit uh, primary mutation, and they're most common in exon 11 and exon 9. Primary mutations in exon 13, uh, 14 and 17 are actually very rare. It's just 1%. But when you look at secondary mutations, and this again, not everybody gets this evaluated because not everybody gets a biopsy at the time of progression. But if you do biopsy the progressing lesion, you might find in addition to their primary mutation, they now have a mutation in exon 13 or exon 17 and 18. These tend to be the more common secondary mutations. And uh, the type of secondary mutations also point sometimes to whether you would respond to a certain second line therapy or not. So in the second line treatment, sunitinib is the standard unless you have an available clinical trial to offer in the second line. But if you do have the data from secondary mutation data, either from a, a tumor biopsy or perhaps from circulating um, you know, tumor cells, the, what we call liquid biopsy, you could take that into consideration. Uh, though I usually uh, use caution because I like to follow the standard second line and third line because sometimes biopsy of one tumor site might not represent the secondary mutations that might be present in all the tumor uh, or all the metastatic, metastatic sites that are present in the patient. So, but if you do develop a, or if you do detect a secondary mutation that you well, such as uh, if you have um, if you have an exon 13 secondary mutation, sunitinib works well. If you have an exon 17 secondary mutation, sunitinib might not work that well. But you might want to test them a little sooner, keep a closer eye, not go three months before the next scan, but probably do it in the two-month time frame.